all of the problems from these videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link, and you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I upload to YouTube. In fact, on the website, there are over a hundred extra videos that I haven't uploaded to YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. Okay, let's get started with the problem. Let's take a look at 9-1-A, direct materials variances. So when I know I'm doing a variance question, and well, this one, it tells me direct materials, I immediately draw this chart. Even before I do the question, I think to myself, okay, well, I know I'm going to do variances, so this is going to come in handy. And I, I just want this to be second nature to you. AQAP, AQSP. And then on the right side, again, AQSP and SQSP. And remember that this is for direct materials purchased. And the right one is for direct materials used. And we'll explain it as we go. But I, I like to do that little setup uh, before I even begin because it just... It makes life so much easier when doing my materials variances, or as we'll see uh, for 9.2, my labor variance, or for 9.3, my overhead variances. So the question reads, Steve Sausages begins business in March. In planning his business, Steve sets out the following material standards. Each sausage should take 250 grams of pork, and pork should cost $10 per kilogram. And for the non-metric crowd, 250 grams is 0 0.25 kilograms. So if pork costs $10 a kilogram, that means in each sausage has 250 grams of pork, 10 times 0 0.25 tells us that, yes, indeed, each sausage contains $2.50 of like pork, like a direct material going into our sausage. In March, Steve purchases <coughs> 80 kilograms of pork for $7.50. Steve makes and sells 300 sausages and has 2 kilograms of pork remaining on hand at the end of the month. Okay, so uh, we want to know whether Steve was efficient, whether he was meeting his standards, or whether he wasn't. And of course, this is a really great tool for evaluating, as I mentioned in the intro video. So let's start to try to figure out the AQ, the actual quantity that Steve purchased. Steve purchased how many kilograms of pork? Well, he purchased 80 kilograms of pork. So that's our AQ. Remember, for materials, Quantity is going to be measured in kilograms, liters, pounds, some unit of measure here, ounces. Um, actual price, what was the price he paid per kilogram? Well, we don't know the actual price, but we know that in total he paid 750 bucks. So let's do some quick math. 750 divided by 80, he paid $9.37.5 per kilogram. So again, the AP is the actual price per kilogram. So 80 times 9.375 is 7.50. And this prong is just like, what did Steve pay for pork? And he paid 750 bucks for the pork he purchased. Okay, don't know why I double underline that. Uh, AQ times SP. Well, okay, the AQ remains 80. The standard price per kilogram, not the standard price per sausage, right? The standard price per sausage is 250 in terms of how much material he thinks is going in. But the price per kilogram is $10. So 80 times 10 is 800. We have enough fuel for a variance here, right? We have enough information. 80 kilograms, 10 bucks per kilogram gives us $800 and 750. Well, there's a difference here. And the difference between the 750 and the 800 is 50. Now we've got to say, <laughs> what does the difference mean? And, and the thing I like to do is I like to look at what's different between the two. So AQ is 80, AQ is 80, right? When I'm comparing the two items, the AQ is the same. So I'll highlight what's different. 
my standard price is $10 a kilogram. When I buy pork, it's supposed to cost me $10 a kilogram. It actually cost me $9.37 a kilogram. So I paid less for this pork than I had anticipated paying. Is this good or bad? Well, of course, it's good. It's good to get the, the same product uh, for cheaper. Uh, so we don't say good or bad, though. And when we do variances, we say favorable or unfavorable. And this is indeed favorable. Let's move over to actual quantity uh, used. So we're interested in direct materials used. Uh, so let's see. Steve purchased 80 kilograms. Did he use all of it? Because a lot of these questions, they use all of it. Uh, but the answer here is no. And how do I know he didn't use all the pork? Because he had two kilograms left over. So if he bought 80 and he had two left over, he must have used 78 kilograms. Uh, our standard price remains 10. 78 times 10 is 780. Uh, my standard price here will be 10 again. My standard quantity answers the question given the actual number of units produced how much and it could be <laughs> bm no dm BM means bad manners when you're playing StarCraft, by the way. Uh, DM, direct material, direct labor, or overhead should have been used. So again, given the actual number of units you produced, how much material labor overhead should you have used? Well, in this case, it's material we're interested in. So how many kilograms of material should you have used? So Steve made 300 sausages. That's the actual uh, level of output. That's the actual number of units produced. 300 sausages. How many uh, kilograms ought he have used? Well, we know sausages are supposed to take 250 grams of pork or 0 0.25 kilograms of pork with 300, um, to make 300 sausages, 300 times 0 0.25 is 75 kilograms. To make those sausages, Steve should have used 75 kilograms. 75 times 10 is 750. The variance here, so again, if, if I told Steve before the month, hey, Steve, you're going to make 300 sausages, Steve would have said, oh, I need 75 kilograms of pork. Now, he used more than that. He used 78. So the difference here is $30. Uh, that's the variance. And we've got to ask ourselves, is this variance a good variance or a bad variance? But of course, we don't say good or bad. We say, is it favorable or unfavorable? And to figure that out, I look at what's different, right? So the 10 and the 10 are the same. But 78 and 75 are different. And let's think about what this means. To make his 300 sausages, he actually used 78 kilograms. If we were planning, we would have planned on using 75. He used more than he had planned. And that makes this an unfavorable variance. He used too much pork. Uh, we call the one on the left the direct materials price variance. And the variance on the right is the direct materials quantity variance. And let's kind of pause for a moment. I, I, so we've answered the question. Compute the direct materials price and quantity variances. Done, right? Like we've answered the question. Let's pause for a moment and think about why this may have happened. First of all, if he started his business and he had variances that were this small, I would say, oh, okay, you've done a good job and I wouldn't really think much of it. But what could cause a price variance to be favorable? Well, maybe Steve went to the butcher and when he was planning, he was buying a kilogram here, a kilogram there, just to make a few sausages. And then he shows up and he goes, hey, I want 80 kilograms. And the butcher goes, oh, you get a deal. You know, it doesn't cost 10 bucks a kilogram for you. You're a, a commercial customer. You get a bulk bargain or maybe you negotiated a bulk bargain. So perhaps this is this is the ongoing price. Perhaps just the price of pork has gone down in uh, the world. Um, that's a possibility. Or perhaps he got a cheaper cut than what he had 
practiced with or what he had planned on. So those are all uh, reasons that we may have a lower price than what we had as our standard. On the right-hand side, why might our quantity variance be unfavorable? Well, for a number of reasons. Maybe he was just making the sausages a little too big. You know, maybe they were supposed to be 250 grams, but they were 260 grams. I mean, you do that 300 times, it adds up. You know, uh, that would actually be exactly three kilograms over if he was just 10 grams over every time. Um, perhaps he had a bad batch. You know, he was cooking a batch and it went bad, or he's preparing a batch, however he does, and it went bad and there was some waste. That's very possible. Um, so there are a number of reasons why one might have a, a negative quantity variance. And like, there's not a right answer here. When you're asked about this, just think about the situation. Think what possibly could have happened to cause this. And I think if, if your prof asks this, as long as you're reasonable, I, I think the prof will be uh apt to give you a good score just for giving like a, a plausible answer here. All right, well, we'll leave the direct materials variance 91A here and uh, we'll move on to the next one. Stay tuned.